And then he got bumped out of the top spot by Robert. So he just decided to extract his revenge from the number two spot. In the opening round, it was Jim Head that fell victim. It was the champ, Tony Pendergon, that didn't quite have enough. Ron Jeff kind of bust out of his slump, only to bust in the semifinals. And how about that side-by-side -side final round? Hey, folks, it's been a long time coming for this guy. How about your funny car champ? Racing, pick your pocket for four thousand dollars in that no qualifier award, and I believe this classifies as revenge. Yeah, that's, that's that's sweet revenge, isn't it? Yeah, I tried to get Jimmy Pop to sign that check over to me, and he refused. So I don't know what to deal with with all that, but uh, you know what? Uh, the, uh, the U.S. Smokeless guys, we wouldn't have made it here without those guys. We hurt that motor. I mean, the semis against Ron and dropped the hole of the step there, and. Uh, you know, uh, being involved with Donna State Perdome has helped our team a lot, but I have to tell you, uh, my fellows are doing a great job. Uh, they're, they're a young group, of, got a couple of good veterans, and uh, I can't really say enough about them. They're a good group of guys, and you know, powering behind us up here, all these great fans. I'm telling you, your fans are great. Thank all of you. Yeah, you can't believe what a group of guys like me. I need that as well, you know, and, uh, and, and young Ashley, she's going to have her day. I mean, she's going to win some races. That's a great outfit over there, but uh, for Summit and Chevrolet and Levi Ranch Shop, especially, I'm proud. Thank you. Rolling in the summer months, you seem to have a car that listens to you on a hot racetrack. Yeah, I, I, I missed the tune up there against Ron in the semis. Uh, I just didn't have it tuned up enough. The air got away from me and put that hole out and I wounded the motor, but... Mark. You know, we, we hey, went back and looked at it, and we looked at it hard and tuned it up a little bit, and, and it scored right down that crummy lane, didn't it? I was proud of that, but uh, I tell you what, hats off to my guys. Great group of guys I got working for me, and uh, like I said, all these great sponsors. Couldn't do it without them, and John Force Racing, I'm proud to race beside those guys. Thanks. Don't wait too long to come see us again, would you? Thank you, I won't. Tell us about it. It's your first at Vegas. Um, another interesting stat is you all three winners today were first time winners in Las Vegas. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. We're, you know, it's just been a hard weekend here. We talked about it earlier on Friday night. And the, the track's just a little treacherous from time to time. And, uh, but, you know, NHRA did a good job with this place, I think. Um, every time we come here before, we tore tires up every run. And, and that's not a good deal either with, with the problems we have. And, and, you know, the good years, they work good today. And uh, the, th the track prep was pretty good. Now, the right lane was a little bit hazardous. You didn't see a lot of winners out of that right lane. And uh, I, I was staging shallow all day trying to keep from, from screwing that deal up so I could have lane choice. And against Ron, I just didn't have it tuned up and I had to put a hole out when I stepped on the gas. So in the finals, I thought, well, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to run hard early in order to win this thing because the track really, really isn't that bad in the right lane. It's just down there on the other end, it just gets a little loose. So we, we did the best we could do and, and uh, you know, I obviously it came out the way it did. We're very happy with that. And my crew did a great job. The U.S. Smokeless guys helped us change the motor between rounds because I hurt the motor against Ron Caps, and uh, that was a big deal too. So thank, thanks to them guys, and you know, just everything really worked well today. Yeah, again, my daughter is an Ashley Force fan. There's no doubt about that. But uh, you know, I said down there in the interview, we got a lot of good girls in this deal. You know, Melanie Troxell and Ashley, and I tell you what, in, in the way of like, top notch, you can't say more about those two. Um, I don't know about you guys, but every time I'm around those two, uh, you're more impressed with them. And to race Ashley in the finals, you know, you're racing John Force. And what? How many? How many crew chief is there now? I don't know. I don't know. Probably eight of them over there. So you know, to, to beat those guys makes me real proud. And Ashley does a good job. She kept the car in the middle of the group. It looked like to me during the run, everybody was. You know, everybody said it was a good race. So happy about all that. And uh, Rachel, she'll be all right. She, she, she's okay with her dad winning that. Although. I, I would like to see Ashley get uh, her first win, but I don't want to be the guy in that stand, I can tell you that. I told them guys, I tried to get Robert to uh, sign that check over to me, that number one qualifier, and you know, he wouldn't do that, so. I, I'll take the extra 20 instead of that four any day for the finals, so. What's your daughter's first name? My daughter's name's Rachel. And how old is she? Rachel's 16. Her and John have had a bond since she was about eight years old, seven or eight. She doted, you know, she's a cute little girl. And uh, John doted over at a race one day, and, he, and you know how he is. God, he's just the sweetest. And uh, they fell in love with each other. And he, every day, I was down at the end of the racetrack. He said, how's your daughter? After I just got done beating his. So that's a pretty cool deal when you think about that. Ain't no wonder Ashley's class act, right? I mean, she's got a good teacher there, I'm sure. We stumbled on the tune-up. Uh, 
at the end of last year. And you know, we talked about the weight deal that has made everybody else a little bit off off center on the way they have to run their cars. And uh, it's it really have played into our hands. And you know, with everything that's going on, I, I can't uh, I can't say that we're fortunate because we did we stumbled on it at the end of last year. But I think we're a little fortunate for for being the way we are and, and being fat and happy. Huh? That's that's what it's all about when, <laughs> when you're 100 pounds overweight to begin with, and then they put 100 pounds on the car. But we were down there. We were minimum weight two runs in a row down there. So I stuck the front weight bar for the finals just to make sure. So anyway, it's, it's been a good weekend with all that. But you're right about that. It's uh, had a good car all year. We've had some mechanical failures, and I screwed up tuning it up at uh, Houston and uh, put the second round there, put a whole lot against Dell the same way, and he, and he just had his stuff together and whooped me. So uh, anyhow, it's kind of cool for the single car teams, don't you think? Yep. I mean, we got uh, Tony Pedregon winning one, and, and me, and Mendel. I mean, that's uh, I think that's really cool. NHRA has done a really good job equalizing the field out there. I, mean, I know there's been some squawking about the weight and from the bigger teams, but uh, you know what? We have to be safe, and we have to have our cars together at the end of the run. So this weight that's being put on by the bigger cars, the heavier cars that are being built, we need that. So anyhow, like you said, that's, that's a good point, though, Jeff. We, you know, I think we have had a little bit of advantage, but uh, you know. The, See the emblem on your shirt there, the Chevrolet. It's uh, it's helping us out. Believe me, that body's it's that thing's a cast me out when it comes to these bad tracks. Even with the extra weight, that was a great side by side. Yeah, it was a good. That's what I mean. I, and Ashley and I had a good side by side there on uh, Q3, if you remember rightly. She went uh, 96 and or 97, and I went 95. So I knew that what the way it was going to be was going to be a good race. I knew they weren't going to go up there and back up. Like last year at Indy, I raced her first round, and my lord, she embarrassed me to death. I went like 91, and she went 78. I was like, well, I ain't going to go up there and go 5'10", I can tell you that right now. I'm going to go up there and swing hard, and it, it actually it worked, so we were lucky.